obviously you had to take a lot of the situations into your own hands. You had some things happen with the the tents and uh, the guide. So what advice do you have for travelers who are planning to climb so they can make sure they are successful in their summit? Uh, read our magazine, because <laughs> I yes. hopefully we'll give you some pointers. But, yeah, look into t- – uh, trust and verify, okay? Ask all the questions. Like, like when you get that briefing, say, well, I get briefings. I expect briefings once or twice a day, and I really hope that useful information is constantly given to me. Explain to me how you're going to acclimatize. Do I do acclimatization hikes every day? You know, I mean, explain to me how do I avoid mountain sickness? I want them to tell, tell you that. And, and, and it's a very simple thing. At each camp, Take about an hour hike upwards to like 100 or 200 meters higher. Hang out there for 20, 30 minutes. Come back down to your tent and go to sleep. That's all. That's kind of all it takes. And drink lots of water. That, that's that's like the most basic thing that you can like at least um, you know understand. Um, ask about the gear. Will I have a mess tent? Because you might assume you do, but you might not have one. If it's so, how much is an extra one? Do I do I have a latrine tent? And that's something I didn't, you know that that like we didn't have. Um, you, you pay extra money, and they'll they actually build like a porta potty tent with a little portable toilet, you know. But we used whatever was there or the bush, and we don't have to go into that. But ask those questions, and 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 really identify like how much should I tip? Have that discussion so you don't get an uncomfortable surprise. Don't tip first because they might disappear, you know. Mm-hmm. Let them do their jobs. Respect them. Um, and just say, don't worry. Just tell them, look, let's take care of each other. I will take good care of you guys afterwards. I will tip you fine. Don't worry. Let's just enjoy this thing together. Like, get that uncomfortable moment. And I think that's the worst thing about those, those, um, those type of tours is that you're left to your own conscience to sort of factor what's good and what's bad. And it's very stressful because you, you already pay like $1,800 a head or $1,500 a person for the expedition. You know, you expect that maybe that's included, but then you have to carry all this cash to tip people, you know, and it's weird carrying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars up a mountain, you know, and then make sure that, you know, how many porters do I have? How much do I carry? Am I going to be surprised that I'm suddenly going to need more porters? You know, what time will I leave, you know, on the day we go? All those things has to be, is the tent leaky? Can you assure us? Is there a tarp that goes underneath it? At the, la- the, the one thing that we want to make sure is that at least we have a space where we're comfortable. Because we were very uncomfortable. I mean, there were times like a river came through our tent, and we had to move the, the tent to another place many times in the rain, you know. Um, one of the porters, you know, carried my duffel bag on his head. The zipper was open. All this water went into my bag. Everything I got wore got drenched. Just simple things like that can really ruin your day. So just watch that and really shop well for gear. Um, what I did was I went to really good sporting goods stores. I looked at everything, took down the names and numbers, ordered it on the Internet. And I, and I hate to say it, but do it. Because if you want to buy Mammut gear in Japan, like a Mammut jacket or shoes could be $300 on the Internet. It's like 100 bucks. A pair of, like, you know, good gloves. You could spend, you know, you could spend hundreds of dollars, you know, in a shop, and you could find the same thing for $75. So, yeah, I mean, the only thing I probably would buy in person is probably my boots, because then you can test them. Um, wear wool socks. I mean, I'm just saying, wear, don't wear cotton. Quick, dry stuff, the good stuff, you know. Um, I noticed that Columbia didn't make the best gear, but Patagonia, Mont Bell, Mammut, um, North Face makes great gear. Um, hard mountain wear, um, hard mountain gear is pretty decent. And I guess it belonged to Columbia, so that, that, that was something I used. I, I, I really like it. But you have to think of it. This is what you have to stake your life on. Yeah. You know? And you gotta layer. Like, just layer. Wear a quick dry undergarment. Wear a quick, wear another, like, uh, uh, another top. And wear a fleece, you know? And then have a jacket or an, and rain gear. So you layer, layer. And that's the best way to do it. And just change your clothes at night. Or something dry, nothing you wore that day. Um, what I usually do is I put my clothes for the next day in the bottom of my sleeping bag, so it's nice and warm, like my undies and everything like that. I wore like a, a nice, like a maybe sweatsuit, sweats, and a, and a cap to sleep. And I and I had a, a very high-rated sleeping bag, 
um, that was used for, I guess, minus 20 degree temperatures, and it was my five star hotel. I had one place where I was in a cocoon and I was warm, and that was perfect. You know, and it's worth it. I mean, your sleeping bag, your shoes, and your jacket and your ringer is really, you need that. Or else you're not going to make it up the mountain. You just won't. 